Welcome to another episode of Enterprise AI Explainer Series. My name is Meena Ganesh, Senior Product Marketing Manager for AI at Box. I'm here with Ben Koos, our CTO at Box, and today we're going to talk RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. Hi, Ben. Welcome. Let's start with the basics. What is RAG and why does that matter for enterprises? Yeah, so RAG is Retrieval Augmented Generation. Everybody calls it RAG, though, because it's kind of a mouthful. And the idea of it is it's a way to get data to your AI models. It's a way to help them know and learn about things that are happening right now and, and, and things that they didn't know when it was trained. Mm -hmm. So it's basically training. No, it's actually okay. explicitly not training. Different. OK, OK. So, okay. so, so, okay. so um, the, the, so w back in the day with, with uh, AI and ML, like um, when I went to school, and um, training was the only way that you'd ever be able to get a model to know something. So mm -hmm. this would be like, uh, let's say that you had a bunch of, um, of documents and you wanted to pull out some key data from them or something like that. You would get some data scientists, you would get a, a, you pick your model, like an like underlying um, ML model, and you would go through and you'd, you'd train it. You'd, pull out features and do these things. And so you train a model to, to do something. And if the underlying format of data or anything changed, you had to then train it or update it to another model. And it was typically quite expensive. It took a lot of compute. It took a lot of time. And so you would train a model. That was really the only way you'd be able to like make something, an, an AI kind of like learn something new. But generative AI doesn't really work that way. Mm -hmm. It's got this, um, the, the idea with it is like the, the, the pre-trained aspect of it is like this. It's the P and, and GPT is is a, a pre is is pre-trained, um, and, and so the I idea is that it kind of read everything. It it was sort of pre presented with like the whole internet in like all books and everything, and, and so it like kind of learned a bunch of stuff uh, ahead of time, and so this makes and it and, but it's very expensive and it takes a quite a long time to train these models, um, and so you don't typically go through and like train them. Mm -hmm. However, um, they are very. Uh, 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 they're very one of the cool things about the the the, um, the AI models is they're very generic and that they can do a lot of different things. They can understand a lot and then be able to give you a lot of answers. So, the idea with RAG is that um, you're able to retrieve information to give it so that it's able to then turn around and and, and help you answer questions. For enterprises, uh, one of the challenges is that um, specifically around this training is that um, almost no data inside of an enterprise ever actually was the models that were never trained on it. Right. So imagine mm -hmm. that you have like 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 mo most most enterprises don't have data that's like publicly available to be in these training sets. That's a good point. That's true. Yes. And, and then also like because they're not actually updated all that often, where things in the enterprise change constantly. Like um, you're always somebody's always updating something that is very important to the enterprise. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also hallucinations are are a big challenge for many AI models um, in in generative AI models in particular. Well, sorry. Uh, if we're talking training and it's different, RAG is different. Why does hallucination even fit in? Like, why is that even a problem? Yeah. So, um, so hallucinations are a fundamental problem with many AI generative models. Mm -hmm. But, um, but it, it's sort of like okay. So, uh, like, what did you study in school? Aerospace. Aerospace. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, okay. So, uh, I recently was watching some of these Starship launches. Okay. So, how do you feel about um, like hot staging uh, in the, the the way that that works uh, in the new Starship launch? So if I ask you this question, that is, um, I'm just guessing that you will actually have a pretty good answer. Yeah. But like, you what, may... what is this pop quiz right yeah, now? Yeah, I thought yeah, I was the one yeah, asking yeah. questions. Okay. So, so, but in this world where it's like you actually know a lot about this topic, right? Because you were trained. So in this AI model, you were trained on this topic. But if I ask you something new and different, you might actually give me an answer because you know about sort of similar stuff. You maybe heard these terms, but you may not actually have all of the latest info. I, I would do a fair amount of guessing. Yeah. In this, Educated guessing. Yes, which is in, in the world of hallucinations, where you say something which is a, like maybe not quite right. Like maybe the word, the way they use it now, is different from the way you learned, or something yeah. like that. So this is the idea of, of these hallucinations. So, um, so retrieval augmented generation or, or RAG is, is sort of the answer to all of these these challenges because what it does is you first go look up or retrieve the information mm -hmm. that 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 you you want, and then you give it to the model. And then the way these AI models work is that um, if you just go through and like uh, uh, read it, um, we you know like they, they read it like yeah. uh, effectively, um, then you then can then incorporate that information, and then w your next answer is usually much better. Um, it, it usually doesn't hallucinate because it, it kind of had just reviewed it. So if I were to ask you this question about like. Um, okay, what what do you think of hot staging or some other uh, reasonable sure. topic? That, that, um, and, and I also said, and here's your book from um, from um, uh, college to review. Um, in addition to here's a paper on how hot staging works or other things. And I gave you a moment to, to look through it. Then probably because you're trained on the background and then you, you get this info, you, you'll give me like a really good answer. Yeah. 
So that's me being the retriever and then you generating the answer. And then that's the kind of the basics of how this works, where um, the, oh, I'm going to rely on your intelligence to be able to answer this question on a topic that you probably know a lot about. But the, the, if it's new or if it's updated or whatever, then you'll get a chance to review it first. And that's the essence of RAG. Interesting. Okay, so if I put this now in, in you know, a little bit more AI terms if possible, the question that you would ask me yeah. about like how rockets work or yeah. whatever, that would be the query. Yeah. And then the additional context that you provide, that would be the retrieved Correct. and then augmented yeah. to the query. Yeah. And then the generation of the response Correct. would be... So, and, and that's how that yeah. so my job, comes together. If I'm the retriever in this scenario, I, my job would be to look at the question and be like, I'm going to go look through things and then come back and pull out the pages and, and, and hand it to you. And then you're the generator of this case. So if we did you in an enterprise context, so something like Box, imagine that you have um, maybe you're working on a project or maybe you have like product docs and you, you have just a lot of data, a lot, you know, maybe gigabytes or, or more of data. You put it all in a, in, in a corpus of data and then you want to then have a question, which is, um, uh, maybe it's about they're building rockets. It's like yeah. I have this question, and, and about rockets. And then so the, um, the retriever in this case of the box system would go in. It would find the most relevant pages, the most relevant documents, the most relevant pieces of info, basically the snippets, the pages, and then take all that, hand it to the AI model, and say, "Here's the question, and here's some relevant data. Please answer." And the AI model, they're intelligent enough to be able to generate this this answer. So in terms of the problems, um, so A, it can work on data it's never seen before. And as long as it has good background, like then it's able to, to, to be able to answer appropriately. And, and the AI models these days are all like really good about, the, I mean, they're kind of like college trained or even beyond like a level of intelligence. So they can quickly intuit things. Um, and then it, it also, um, it can work on things that are immediately updated because if you like, let's say you update the way that this, this uh, the product documentation of the project, and then you ask a question a moment later, it'll just go retrieve the, the new doc and then it'll be able to give it to you. Mm -hmm. um, and then because it's using the latest up-to-date uh, information and that it, it prompts the model with, then it's much less likely to hallucinate. Mm -hmm. So this RAG solution overall is kind of the best way to be able to do um, like any kind of enterprise level AI task that requires these kind of things like, um, including and especially that the retriever actually needs to go look up information that you have access to. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think the uh, the last point that you just said, you know, retriever looking at things that the user has access to yeah. is such a fundamental point. I think, you know, we just need to dedicate a whole another episode to it. And I think we might. We need to uh, yeah. Uh, but I think, you know, if we were to give a TLDR for enterprises today, yeah. you know, we talked about the basics of RAG. We talked about how it works and how it relates to when you ask a question yeah. um, and how it brings you know, all of that answer together. Yeah. Well, what would be a TLDR to CIO of an enterprise yeah. looking at AI and, and just learning through these yeah. things? So typically the answer would be that like you don't, even if it's possible to fine tune a model, even if it's possible to try to go through training, you typically don't need to or want to go through training. It's just too complex and too expensive. Mm -hmm. Using RAG is the best way to, to have it operate in enterprise data. And, um, but and if, if they're going to build something in their own sort of AI model uh, or their AI integrations, then they can do it themselves. But more likely these days, um, almost all the platforms that you have your data in, you my recommendation would be that you use the ones that have incorporated directly all of the details of RAG. It's kind of a complex um, infrastructure piece and needs to be maintained and updated and so on. And so uh, at Box, we spend a ton of time doing RAG. I know other, other uh, platforms do as well. And so that would be the kind of thing that you would want to be able to both make sure you're getting good AI answers, but then also sort of uh, make sure that you don't have to spend all of your time doing the details of RAG to be able to get the kind of results that you want from AI. Yeah, and it, it sounds like all of these components coming together really makes like at least one of the factors for more, what you know we call enterprise grade AI. Yeah. This would be one of the factors that yeah. RAG make is, it enterprise grade AI. RAG is basically the underpinning of of a lot of AI in the enterprise. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Thank you to our viewers for joining us on yet another episode of Enterprise AI Explainer Series. We'll see you next time.